All right, on this corner, I've got uh, some really heavy paint layers. It's got, I don't know how many layers of paint. He just kept blobbing paint on this old vehicle here to keep the rust from going away instead of trying to treat the rust. And then I've got over here, this quarter panel here has got the same garbage. Lots of layers of paint on there and it doesn't come off very easy by sanding it. So I'm gonna try and use some chemical stripper. I'll show you what I do normally. So if you go to the paint store, they got a lot of different types of paint stripper. Um, and they have Aircraft and Jasco, which are pretty similar as far as the potency. They're very, very strong. Um, and if you get that on your skin or anything, in which you can cover up your, your skin however much you want, and you're still going to get some on you somewhere. Or in fact, with those strippers, typically if I have rubber gloves on, sometimes they eat through the rubber gloves and so it totally defeats the purpose of wearing them so i typically use these cheaper strippers and some people will say well those don't work very good and maybe it's just because you need to listen to the video maybe i'll show you something that might help you so they have this one they have one made by clit uh bix and they're usually about 10 or so dollars less than the uh, other ones per gallon i don't know i haven't bought stripper in a while in fact i don't strip all the time but um, with these ones, uh, myself, I mean, I would highly recommend you use a lot of PPE to cover yourself. You guys know what that is now. So to protect yourself, respirator, uh, gloves, all that stuff. Um, with me, I've been doing this so much, I, I don't get very much on my skin. And if I do, I just immediately rinse it off. And this stuff doesn't get, I know I'm going to get some on me. So... Um, uh, regardless of whether I have gloves on or usually I end up getting more on me with gloves because I'm thinking I'm being more protective so I don't usually use them but they, then again that's up to you so next I'm gonna what I usually do is I'll take some heavy grit sandpaper uh, 40 36 is better you just kind of scratch the surface what that does is just opens it up to get the stripper to go inside you know, that under that first layer of paint, especially if it has a sheen on it, just kind of knock some of it off. Then I'll take my stripper here. Eye protection is a really good idea too. And then I'll just put it in a mixing cup like this. Oh wait, I need to shake this up. It, you you got to be careful shaking this stuff. This one hasn't been used in a while. If you don't shake, if you if it doesn't mix up right, it won't work very good. I usually shake it in advance. Okay. But sometimes if you shake it you know, and it's hot out or something like that, that lid can actually blow off of there. So be very careful. Stripper can be very hazardous material. So... Again, I use this product because it is less likely, if it gets on my skin, it doesn't burn. It takes about a few minutes, a few, about two or three minutes before you even feel anything. But Jasco, as soon as that sucker touches your skin or aircraft, you're going to be burnt. It, it hurts really bad. So um, this stuff is a little easier for me to work with. So what I do is I'll tilt my bucket like so I take this the brush this is a chip brush these are cheap if you have a Harbor Freight they sell them really cheap and I throw it I throw the stripper on here now I'm really far away my body is and I just kind of throw it on there I've even done this by putting it in a spray gun and and, and thrown it on with the just sprayed it on with the spray gun course then I'm completely covered up I've got the ground covered up I've got everything around me covered up okay so you throw this on there and this stuff is very slow to react so don't expect that you're gonna put it on and immediately it starts bubbling up when you put on the Jasco or the aircraft it'll immediately start bubbling up and you might think it's doing more because of that um, but if you just are a little more patient this stuff is a lot less hazardous on your body 
because you are going to get something on you and it's going to really not be very very fun doing stripping that way so using this cheaper stuff can still get the job done and you still um, don't get you know as burnt <laughs> even if you like I said I could cover my hands I don't have anything on them right now I don't have any stripper on them and if I did I would just go immediately that right now go rinse and just come back and work on it so anyway that's that we'll give that about 10 minutes on there we'll come back in the video and check a look at it it's been not quite two minutes now uh, just about ready give it another minute or so all right so it's only been about another 20 seconds but one of the next thing I'll do is I'll take either this is a nylon wire brush I like the little ones with the stainless steel on them but I don't have any right now so but I do have one of these a larger one and I'll take a wire brush while it's still wet and I'll just kind of agitate it a little bit sometimes it even takes a whole layer off like this one I'm not gonna scrape it off or anything I'm gonna I want a lot of that stripper to remain on there because I'm just gonna right now I'm gonna let this kind of I'm just gonna do this and I'm gonna recoat it while it's still wet so again I'm not suggesting to you to not use gloves that's I'm recommending you do uh, but like I said I've done this a couple times I don't get much on my body at all and uh, I could do like a whole door with this and I pretty much so I'm just gonna kind of throw it on don't try and spread it too far you just throw it on put it on really the thickness of how you put it on is totally important so you want to get it on there really nice and thick you can even you know, I'm just I'm not pushing on the brush I'm just letting kind of gliding the brush over it so it just releases onto there and uh, gets on there quickly yeah do that go do something else for a minute come back let it sit on there for five or so ten minutes depends on the weather if it's warmer you got to get back a little quicker if it's colder you got to give it a little more time so uh, we'll come back in a minute as it starts to peel again I'll just go ahead and throw a little more on there The trick is, is get as much on there as possible. As thick as you can get it on. If you put it on real thin, it just doesn't do. Jasco and those ones will, but like I said, you're going to pay the price for that. I just don't use them anymore. This does the job. It gets it done very, very nicely. And it's a lot easier on my body. So even like I said I used to cover up my whole self whatever put on rubber gloves and a rubber suit pretty much with a Jasco and aircraft and somewhere on your body it would get through that stuff it would either go right through your gloves or and it just you know it's just a bad day so it just it's not fun much easier to use this stuff so let's set that set for a minute come back into it in a minute so sometimes I will take one of these and I'll let I'll go ahead and rinse it off with water to neutralize the stripper and then I'll take one of these of course use eye protection and everything else uh, and actually we'll finish it off with this because what happens is it softened up all the paint but for some reason these layers of paint are a little more difficult than some of the other ones I've done and you can also use a drill you know I mean, here. Speed up the process. Plus, I got my tire covered up now. I don't want to get any other wheels. But what you do now is, is what this is doing is it's putting gouges in the in the paint. And those gouges in the paint are actually going to allow the paint to come off a little faster.
these gouges in there, so. All right, so that's all gouged in. We're gonna take another look here in just a minute. We'll see what happens. All right, so let's put one more coat of stuff on here after it's been gouged like that. And let's see how much faster it starts to come off. You might say to yourself, oh, I could do that with one shot with Jasco. Uh, you know, I've done this before. I've used Jasco in aircraft. They're almost exactly the same stripper. And, and listen, you wouldn't get this with one coat of that stuff. No way. This stuff is, this paint that's on here is like super hard to get off with anything. So, no, it wouldn't do it. All right. We're just going to let that set for a minute. It's about two or three minutes to five minutes right now in this weather. So it's starting to react quite a bit faster now as I've opened the, what you're trying to do is open up by sanding and by using uh, the wire brush, you're actually trying to open up layers of paint because paint seals the surface. So if you can get those layers to open, then the, then the chemical can get down deeper in and take more layers off. There's actually a lot of paint on here if you haven't seen. We're getting down to that orange, which is the last repaint before there's a gray underneath that. There was like several layers of this yellowy orange. And then there's a brighter orange below all that. I know because I've done several layers of it. So we'll hit this with the wire brush again with on the drill and we'll see how it looks. being real careful not to fling this stuff everywhere wherever you get stripper it's gonna remove paint or skin or whatever I still have yet to have gotten anything on my skin yet Alright, another layer. Let's just throw some more stripper on, take a look. Alright, here we go. It's only gonna take gonna take a little less time on this coat. Now, again, what I could do right now is I could rinse this off with water and I could use that twisted wire brush. Make sure it's a twisted wire brush. You can get those at Harbor Freight, a little kit of a whole bunch of brushes with that comes with the drill size or not drill size it comes with a bunch of different wire brushes and those twisted wire brushes if you use it on a grinder or sander you can take off the stripper or strip it down to bare metal and kind of polish the metal very quickly at this point you don't really need to sand um, you can just use that and it'll take it right down to metal very quickly um, but I usually use something slower than that because when it flings everywhere from that sander so let's say you have a car nearby or something like that. It's going to land on that car and it's going to strip the paint off the car. So whatever's around, you better have it completely covered up or have this out somewhere where it's, you know, not around anything else. And then if you're going to use the grinder, you can use the grinder like this and with that, poly that wheel on there and it just removes it to right to bare metal. Even probably I could have done it the last time I stripped without going to this layer. But I'm just showing you guys because maybe you don't have something like this and you're just trying to do it the best way you can. So a couple of different options. But like I said, if I just right now plug this thing in, that would go to just raw, beautiful, shiny metal. Okay. We're going to continue with the drill and see how well it does on the next. So if you notice how quickly now it's starting to wrinkle, um, this stripper starts to really activate quicker once it gets the, the paint open. Once the paint's open, it starts to react quickly. So while it's still reacting, 
haven't done anything yet. I'm just going to throw a little more of stripper on there. I did the lower part already. Uh, while it's, you know, you just keep that stripper nice and thick and wet. And don't do this in the sun. The sun dries it out too fast. It doesn't allow it to react as quickly. So, anyway. It's a patient game. It's you just... You notice now, even after I just put that second coat on, it's really starting to react quickly. And that stripper is very wet now, so if I do it with the drill, um, I gotta be a little really careful because wherever, it's gonna fling a bit. And again, like I have shorts on, I have glove, no gloves. And again, I haven't got anything myself on my hands. That's just because I've done this a lot of times. I'm not saying that you guys should do that. In fact, I'm saying that you should definitely cover yourself up your first few times of doing it maybe after 20 years of doing it you'll figure it out Do a little more stripper on those areas, bring you guys back in. So the strippers I use are like Crown, Clean Strip, Bix. I'm trying to think of the others. They're the cheaper ones usually you can find at like Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, and like I said, they, they do the same thing. It just takes a little bit longer to, for it to react. It doesn't mean it's gonna take longer to do the job. It means it's gonna take longer for it to react with the paint. So you just put it on, layer it, let it set. The thing I found with the Jasco and the um, aircraft is they dry a lot faster. So this stuff stays wet longer, so it continues to react where Jasco and the others, they react and then that first layer of paint comes loose and then it starts to crystallize and it's kind of hard to get off where this stuff kind of stays wet and you can kind of play with it a little bit longer and I find that a lot easier to deal with so it's up to you you can try the other ones you'll find out um, experience I've done probably you know a thousand different things of stripping or more and after doing that you kind of you know, get a little bit of rhythm of what you're doing and then uh, find your own way to do it um, what I'm gonna do now is at this point I'm just gonna take and rinse this with water and what that's gonna do is that's gonna neutralize these the cheaper strippers now there's some of them that neutralize with with uh, with like lacquer thinner or something like that, and some of them that neutralize with water. And I believe most of these do r uh, rinse off with water. Um, the ones that I use do. Um, I don't know about Jasco and the other. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've used them. So anyway, let me rinse this off with water. We'll take a look at it. So after it's rinsed off with the water, you want to try to blow it off with of there. Also works well. I'll finish that up, bring you guys back in. So, I just wanted to let you know I am wearing these, and I have been while I was using the drill. Every once in a while, you get something in your eye, not a good thing. So, with your eye protection on. Some of you guys still have your gloves on at this point too, because sometimes there's a little bit of stripper behind somewhere, but most of it right now is neutralized. We're gonna see what this thing does. I'll show you what, how much, how quickly it comes off with this.
All right, I don't think I need to strip the whole thing to show you what I'm doing. But you can see how well that gets down to near bare metal. And from there, it can easily be sanded with the DA sander, maybe do a little bit more with the wire brush and uh, comes off really fast. Now, on a flat panel like this, you can do the same thing and it's actually even easier to take it off with that wire wheel. Um, so you'll find that wire wheel trick is the key thing because once the stripper gets to a certain point, all the paint underneath it is soft. So when you hit it with that wire brush, it just removes it. So anyway, that's the trick. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, share, and subscribe. I'd uh, love to see your comments. And uh, let me know what you think. Talk to you in the next one.